This guy rewrote alt tab using your alt tab, huh? This it's so ridiculous. Right. This better be good. Good, good, good. Let's upload my first dumb little video. No one's gonna watch anyways. And that's when it happened. Primogen, my biggest hater, reacted to my video. I'm gonna rewrite all tab to save 0.1 seconds. He said my program is useless. Programs? Not good. And that I should just use Linux. Maybe you should just use Linux. And now I have to prove him wrong or else his mob is going to assassinate me unless I switch to Linux. But I knew the beaten. I fight for Prime. With my program, instead of having a stroke all tabbing, you switch programs by typing the first letter of the app's name. Now, what possible problem could Prime have with my amazing solution? If you have the same program open twice, you have to press a second key to select which window you want to open. And that second key makes it inconsistent because you don't know what key is going to get assigned to the window you want to switch to. So to stay alive and have the absolute pleasure of working with Windows apps, I, do anything you. I now have to rewrite my entire program in another language. And then I will also fix Prime's issue. I mean, I could just fix the issue instead of rewriting everything, but uh, let's create an awesome new project. And with a new project, I mean, cr create a new text file. We're going to do everything from scratch in C. I don't want peace. I want problems. I'm going to need an open jail window. <clears throat> uh, we're going to use a library. This library doesn't help to make UI. I still have to do UI myself. So we're going to add the most revolutionary piece of technology for the next 10 centuries to come. My own UI system. It somehow bodies Microsoft's WinForms UI in every single way. I'm kind of retarded. Using my UI system, I could draw something to the screen pretty quickly. But there was one tiny issue. This thing is useless. Obviously, the first thing we're going to do is remove the title bar because it's ugly. I'm not really the one to talk if I use a language with the wow. syntax. It was actually pretty easy. We just have to tell Raylib to undecorate the window. Wait a minute. What the heck is Raylib? Raylib is an absolute giga shadow of a library. The one I foreshadowed at the beginning. It's also a super powerful resource. The code is just there and you can get this. You can actually read it. The average C++ code would probably get a stroke hearing this because it cannot comprehend being readable. My current program uses CPU rendering, but with Raylib we can use GPU rendering to do unprecedented innovation like draw text and draw rectangles and you know it draws text and rectangles the two things that traumatized WinForms UI beyond repair if you don't know what the heck GPU rendering means the GPU is made and therefore faster for rendering but to use the GPU you can't just write code who do you think you are a programmer no 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 because the GPU manufacturers force you to use the worst code in existence to talk with their GPUs so you have to decide between three options OpenGL made in 1992 that breaks on every second computer for no reason besides that it just wanted to Vulcan that's made for people who like to spend half their lifetime to write Shakespeare sized code to finally get a single triangle on the screen or worst of all direct x why worst of all it's made by microsoft so after not so thorough consideration i reached a very difficult conclusion i don't have to choose because i use raylip and that uses opengl so that whole sequence was kind of useless now before prime's mob nukes me i should probably get to To make our program useful, it should show up when the user presses the activation hotkey. It runs in the background and uses a low-level keyboard hook to listen to all your input and sells it to the CCP. Now once it detects the activation hotkey, it uses the Windows API to pop up and show up above every other program. Green, green. What, what's your problem? Then we use Enum Windows to list all the windows. After all that work, we can now implement switching windows by typing the first letter of the program's name. Currently, we only have a window ID and a window title, so we have to find the actual program name, chrome.exe. But when you have a window in your code, you, you can't just find out what program this window is. <laughs> why, why would you want that? I mean, is it Firefox, is it Chrome, or does it really matter? So obviously, you can find out what program it is by just getting the file path of the window. I mean, that makes sense. From that, we now have to extract the name and now we know what program it is. Everything feels like instead of scratching my left ear like this, I have to do it like that. 
And this is pretty much, this is pretty stupid. Real quick, let me know if YouTube is a donkey and runs ads on my videos, even though I have them disabled. Next thing, we have to get the process icon. And there's actually a very handy way to do that called get the process icon. No, just kidding. I had to write my own. Don't ask me how I got the code. I am on a remote island on the edge of the Gulf of Alaska. At the Everything should just work fine. And what the hell is this? I just have to change the color space, right? So um, uh, what, what the hell am I doing? Turns out I could just tell the GPU to use the Windows bitmap color space BGR instead of RGB for the icons. So we got that working, but just to share some of my pain, this is how many ways there are to get a icon handle. But you have to use every single one of them because the previous ones could just randomly fail if they want to. And when you use the wrong order, the icons were blurry as hell and different programs had to use different orders. So this is... I, I love it. Now we can spice up our UI with some shader action. I look like a burnt chicken nugget. Boom, we have some nice looking UI. You see, it wasn't that hard at all. It didn't take that long. Now is the perfect time to fix the issue that's been threatening my life. What is a train do? The problem with the inconsistencies when you have two windows of the same program open. There's no problem if you have, for example, Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. There's two A's. What are you gonna do there? Dummy. So you can just map Premiere Pro to P and After Effects to A. I might have just goofed that up. Can I just have really stupid excuses and just stick to that and instead of being corrected every time I say a word? Okay? Like, it's like, oh, actually, no, you could actually totally... No. So, Prime, what do you think you do when you have the same program open twice? I don't think. I'm not a fan of thinking. Either you map that second window to another workspace or all tabbing on an existing workspace. So that's at least a millisecond you're wasting. Prime, you call yourself a Vim user. Real Vim users would not rest until every microsecond of inefficiency is eradicated. So now we have established that Primogen is not a real Vim user. Dare I say he might even be a VS code user behind the scenes. I completely agree with this. Visual Studio Code Prime Use Neo B. I fight for Prime. So what's the solution when you want to switch between windows of the same program? Most people either Alt-Tab or move the windows to different workspaces and then navigate workspaces. Now for my solution, you just map the window to any key sequence you want and you don't have to manage the windows and move them to other workspaces or anything like that. And I'll just add another feature because why not? Let's say you lack swag and use Discord in the browser. Boom! Custom mapping rules that can match window metadata like title. You can just map your Discord browser to for example D. Now instead of doing whatever you did before, your unswagness has evaporated and now you're rich as well because you know the saying time is money and you save a whole lot of time. As the final nail in the coffin, I'll implement a non-existent feature for Windows and Linux by the way. Alt tilde from Mac OS. That feature allows you to switch between windows of the same app. Now it's in Windows as well. And as the final nail of the final nail in the coffin, I will add another feature which allows you to map the second window or the third window or the fourth window that's open to a different key. That means the first window you open of the program can be mapped with one key, the second window with another key, the third and the fourth and so on. With these features, conflicting windows aren't an issue anymore. So Prime, what do you have to say? Everybody go subscribe to him. Seriously now. Dude, he's Chad. Go subscribe to him. Prime, you clearly have agreed to the license I showed very clearly at the beginning of the video. I mean, how could you possibly miss it? I look forward to seeing the video proof. I have no idea how you're going to get it, though, because I haven't released my program yet. But uh, that sounds like a you problem.